Well, good morning, Lionhearts. How are you today? It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion, and here you are on episode 299 of my daily vlog. Can you believe it? For almost 300 days, I haven't missed a day, and all of a sudden, one day, I just decided, hey, let's start filming these little videos about our day and see what happens, and almost 300 episodes later, and right on the cusp of hitting 2,000 subscribers... Wow, what a ride it's been. Um, I'm sorry the last couple of days I've been on uh, medications and recovering from surgery and haven't really had anything to smile about. And uh, I know people don't come here to feel bad. I want you guys to have a good time when you come here. And man, hopefully those days are right on the horizon for us. <laughs> right just up over the hill. Um, I don't know. I am hoping that I will have a special vlog for you tomorrow. Um, hey! Leave that alone. He's over there chewing on my protein bar wrapper. I'm hoping to have a special vlog for you tomorrow, but I think I waited a little bit too long to try and get it um, set in motion, but you never know. Miracles can happen, and we'll see. If not, I have something else planned tomorrow, and it'll be uh, worth your time, and it'll be a great day. Um... I, I almost led on to what it was going to be, but I don't want to, just in case the other thing happens. So, thanks for coming and joining Days with Jordan the Lion. Thanks for riding this uh, crazy pirate ship of a vlog for 299 straight days. And uh, I hope it's worth your day to come and see me today. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. Well, we're out and about for the first time today. Sam said he was going to come by and pick us up today again and take us out to the park, but he's running errands, so I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm getting pretty hungry, so I want to go get some lunch. But uh, I'm thinking, because tonight and tomorrow night are uh, both nights at the Hollywood Bowl that the Dead and Company are playing, The Grateful Dead with John Mayer. So I think I might go tonight. Usually the first night's the cheaper the two nights if you're trying to get tickets, but uh, I think I might go. I had... Uh, some tip money from a couple of weeks ago that I put in a jar just in case I wanted to go, so I already have the money sitting aside, and as long as it doesn't rain, I think that might be a fun thing to do for the vlog today, or tomorrow. Oh, well, my hand's feeling a little bit better today. I accidentally bumped it when I was putting my shirt on, and it didn't sting or hurt or anything, so that's a good sign. Hopefully it's uh, just a matter of days before I can kind of use it again. I had to move my car the other day because of, like, yesterday? Yesterday morning or the night before or something like that. I had to move my car because of street cleaning, and just moving it from one side of the street to the other was... I had to drive, do it one-handed. It was a pain. This is one of Jaws' best friends, Bailey. Ah, oh, bummer. I just looked at the weather forecast, and it looks like it's going to rain tonight, so... I think I better go vlog something just in case because I don't want to... I can't go to the concert in the rain. I can't get my hand wet, so I can't do that. Um, maybe tomorrow. Who knows? Um, I talked to one of my friends, and he's actually going tomorrow with um, his son and some other friends. And he actually used to be a... Um, he used to manage a pretty well-known touring Grateful Dead tribute band. Um, what's their name? Um, I'm drawing a blank right now, but their deal is they go all over the country playing big venues and they pick one night in the Grateful Dead's history, like one concert, and they play that exact set list. And the, they play all the solos and everything exactly the same way that they did on the uh, in the concert or like on the bootleg. So it's a pretty unique thing. And so he knows... He did that for like seven years. He was their tour manager and everything. So I think he knows a lot of people in that community. And he said a lot of people are coming out for that tomorrow. So I thought maybe that might even make it more fun. All right. I got to go uh, return some shorts at Ross. So you guys are going with me. Oh, oh, the name of the, uh, the Grateful Dead tribute band that he tour managed. They were called the Dark Star Orchestra. If, you've ever, if anybody's ever seen them, Dark Star Orchestra. Well, I think it's safe to say Hollywood Billiards is officially gone. Now, usually the uh, store closing signs would immediately entice me to go over there and shop, but what they don't say on there is 
or well, what they, yeah, exactly, what they don't say is there's no discount. Everything must go store closing, but when you go over there, everything is the same price as it was before the store was closing, so, eh, not worth it. Diamond water? What is this, a nightclub? Ooh, I love that stuff. Always a line. Always a line. Uh oh. All kinds of neighborhood freebies out today. Free monitor, uh, free Price is Right stovetop range. Yep. I didn't put it on the vlog the other day, but I did actually walk over to the Pantages and try and get a ticket for the Brian Wilson concert. But it was, basically it came down to, uh, basically it came down to either going to the Dead & Company or going to see Brian Wilson do Pet Sounds. And though I've seen them both um, two or three times each, I felt like Pet Sounds is my favorite album and all, but it's a little bit more formulaic like the co the show is every, every time I've seen Brian Wilson it's pretty much like all the musicians are good and everything so it's pretty much exactly like the record which is good and it's what you want but if I'm going to use my one bit of money cuz I'm when I'm using the uh I'm selling my golf clubs I'm going to use that money towards these tickets so it balances out and uh I just figured if I'm going to go to one concert the Dead & Company's a little bit more unpredictable. It's a little bit more of a happening. It's a cooler venue, so I just felt with all that combined, I'd kind of rather do this instead. So we'll probably do that tomorrow. But uh, as soon as this guy gets done roaming around, we're gonna head off and do the vlog for today. And what we're gonna do today is the uh, 1313 Vine Street ABC Theater. Well, we're on our way to go see what we're gonna vlog today. and. This ought to be a fun one. Where we're actually going today is the oldest facility in Hollywood still standing that was originally created for television. All right, well, we're here. Right now, this is nowadays called the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Sciences Pickford Center. But it didn't used to always be. What it used to be was Originally, it was the Don Lee Mutual Building. And Don Lee never even saw the building. This building was actually built in 1948 and named after Don Lee. Don Lee was a local Los Angeles uh, Cadillac dealer who got into the radio broadcasting business. Basically in the early 30s, he had kind of a little bit of a friendly dual war going on with Earl Anthony, the owner of a big Packer dealership out here. Earl Anthony bought KFI Radio, and so it gave uh, Don Lee the idea to get into broadcasting himself, and over a few years he would amass 12 or 13 radio stations. So when 1948 came around, his son Thomas Lee still had those stations, got this building dedicated to his father. And this turned into the very first home of Channel 2 Los Angeles. In those days it was KCBS. And uh, throughout the 50s, 60s, and 70s, this was a main hub for producing television shows. And in fact, in the late 60s, I believe it was like 66, 67, ABC took over this property and they started producing hit shows uh, hosted by Bob Eubanks, like the shows like The Dating Game. Now in the early days of the Don Lee, they're actually, and you can kind of see, there's a bit of a square that's been paved over right here. And that actually used to be a big glass window that they used to advertise the new Cadillacs in, and that was 
Part of the reason that Don Lee got into broadcasting was basically just to advertise his new product. But in the late 60s when ABC took this place over, they started producing hit shows like Bob Eubanks, The Newlywed Game, The Dating Game, The Joey Bishop, Bishop Show. Um, this was actually the very first place that Johnny Carson filmed a network television show. They had uh, Carson Cellar was recorded here in the 50s, as well as the Johnny Carson Show. And um, this was also said to, at one point, have a penthouse at the top of it. That was rumored to have Jerry Lewis as a resident at one point, Bobby Darren, and even Frank Sinatra. And now, this is what it looks like today, but in 1984, this was also one of the main hub offices for the production side of the 1984 Olympics. And they say that when you would come in here and go into the front lobby, you could actually see a painting dedicated to the Olympics. Now what's also fascinating about this place is that this was also where they filmed the TV show Barney Miller, as well as American Bandstand. See, ABC in those days had two different studios that they mainly produced their television shows out of. Right here, which was called 1313 Vine Street Theater, and they used to have this really awesome sign standing right out here. And I'll post a picture of it so you can see it. But they also had Prospect Studios, and they would alternate sending productions back and forth. So some of the American Bandstand and some of the Jerry Lewis telethons, as well as Barney Miller, would have been filmed at both here and over at Prospect Studios. What a crazy history this is. To think for all those years, all that radio was recorded here, broadcast here, and then all those amazing uh, dating shows and game shows that everybody came to know from that era in the 60s, the Joey Bishop show. There it is today. Now since I'm a member, I'm gonna see if I can go in and take a picture of this they named this after Mary Pickford in 2002, and I want to see if I can get a picture of the inside lobby. Well, it looks like they have this all locked up for some sort of uh, event. As you can see, they're getting ready to serve some sandwiches, but uh, we can see inside here. You can see the Oscar statue, and this would have been the lobby of old ABC television and KCBS radio. You know, I read online a lot of chat rooms and a lot of forums because I couldn't find a whole lot about this place, but I could find people that used to work here. And that's how I found out all the shows that were filmed here and everything. And one of the um, posts said that it was somebody who worked here in the mid 80s and they said that they would frequently go up to that uh, green marble chim or uh, that green marble fireplace up there in the quote unquote Bobby Darren or uh, Frank Sinatra suite, but they said they would also go in the basement and you could find old relics from the uh, the 50s and the early 60s, some of the things that they'd use from the television production here. So if you ever get a chance to go in here, or if you work here, go down in the basement, take a look, see what you find. And imagine right there, you would have seen that Cadillac sitting right there being advertised in that big window that's now covered up. There's the penthouse up there. And here's kind of a side view so you can see how deep the property is. It basically took up the whole block. All right guys, so I'm over here walking past the old Paramount Pictures and I can't believe I just saw what I saw. I've been coming by here for 17 years and I never noticed this. I walked right past it, just stopped and read it. Let me read it to you guys. It says, 
On February 13, 2004, the entertainment industry's time capsule buried on this world-famous corner site since 1954 was opened to commemorate another 50 years of Hollywood history. It was on this block that Cecil B. DeMille directed Hollywood's first full-length feature, The Squaw Man. For the Jesse L. Lasky feature play company and the site became the birthplace of Paramount Pictures. NBC Radio City was based here from 1938 to 1964 and is today is uh, home to Washington Mutual. To mark this special occasion, a new time capsule was buried containing memorabilia reflecting the entire first century of Hollywood. In a ceremony co-hosted by Honorary Mayor Johnny Grant, Chairman of Hollywood Historic Trust and the Hospital. Hollywood Chamber of Commerce, Mutual Washington Mutual, was entrusted to house the time capsule site slated to be unearthed in 2037 during Hollywood's 150th anniversary celebration. So somehow I never noticed that, but there's a time capsule here. As I'm out walking around, I see all kinds of people dressed up in Grateful Dead clothes, so there's definitely a lot of deadheads out here tonight. Well, I just got a call from the doctor's office wanting me to come in on Friday for an assessment appointment instead of uh, next Tuesday which is good because I actually wanted to be in downtown on Friday to vlog anyway so I'll just have a few hours to kill down there and maybe he'll be able to tell me when I can start working and stuff again well good evening Lionhearts thanks for going on the adventure with me today and I hope you guys enjoyed what we saw and I hope you learned something if you're coming to Los Angeles I hope you found a new place that you can swing by and have a story to tell your friends so Come back tomorrow for episode 300. Hopefully we'll hit that 2,000 subscriber mark just for a little feather in the hat. And uh, hopefully we'll go to a concert. Who knows? Maybe, maybe I won't be able to get a ticket. Maybe I will. Either way, 300 episodes. Thanks to those of you who have found me very early on. All the way to the people that just found me today. Thank you for watching my videos. I appreciate it. And uh, my daily vlog will continue. Hopefully 365 straight with no breaks. Days with Jordan the Lion. Good night.